What's up, 49er fans? I'm Jason Aponte, the man to my left. Needs no introduction. 49ers legend, tight end from Maryland, Vernon Davis. Vernon, how are you, man? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So I know, uh, you know, we're going to get into the 49ers stuff, and a lot of people want to hear about that. But there is something that you are are now venturing out into. You know, you have the acting stuff now. You, you're, you're branching out into new things. There's a new business venture that you have. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, smart picks is is uh, gives you predict. It's all about predictive outcomes. It's a way for our the world who loves betting to have um, more leverage and to be able to use our AI platform to help them win and achieve the goals they want to achieve. It's it's, it's awesome. Of 150 factors that go into helping them come up with these predictions. Um, unlimited access. Our subscribers have un unlimited access to picks. Um, Unique login profile. It's just a beautiful platform that I encourage all of our all of our all of our better all of the people who love enjoy betting to um, to be a part of it. It's, it's it's awesome. Is it a part? Um, is it in the Apple Store? Is that where you'd be able to find it? App stores, things like that, or is it just a website based? Um, just for people, just so they know where to to log in and sign up at. Yeah, you can uh, you can uh, you can find uh, access on the uh, on the website. We're creating um, applications for every, every, all platforms from Apple uh, to Android, you name it. I think it's, um, but like I said, I'm not just speaking because I'm a spokesman for the product. It's just that this platform, I wish this platform was around a long time ago because it is it's definitely uh, accurate. It's, it's definitely one of those, those uh, platforms that gives you a better chance at winning. Absolutely. And AI is taking over in almost everything as well, too. So why not, you know, try to use the most of it if it's going to help you, you know, with uh, wagering and stuff like that. There's a lot of people that that are very invested in that. It's great to hear that you're, you know, you're branching out and doing different things, Vernon. It's uh, it's been really cool to watch your career develop after, you know, football as well, too. So that that's been that's been something that's been a treat, I think, for a lot of 49er fans. Speaking of 49er fans, I guess uh, I don't want to bury the lead too long. I know this is like a, a, a topic that I think for almost the better part of like 30, 40 years has been the 49ers quarterback position, right? Like it's just when you have such a position with heavy lore, Joe Montana, Steve Young, Jerry, uh, you know, Jeff Garcia, right? Like like those type of guys, you know, Brody. Just I, I have a question for you because you played with Alex Smith, who was drafted number one overall. And in the beginning of his career, there were struggles and, and that may be to – you know, having a bunch of coaches and not being in a system. And then Trey Lance is drafted at number three. And unfortunately, now he's a Dallas Cowboy and they felt that this was the correct move. I, I wanted to ask you, Vernon, do you feel like there are any parallels that you've seen with Alex Smith's time in the beginning to what happened with Trey Lance in his beginning time while he was a 49er? Yeah, I think Trey Lance is one of those guys who's taking him a little bit of time to come around me. Of course, he had the injury. And then with this, the organization not giving them an opportunity to to fairly prove himself. I've always been a Trey Lance. The organization that he finds is just a matter of time. And he's going to prove everybody wrong. I know it because he, I mean, look at his upside. I mean, he's very, very talented. He can throw, he can run, he can do it all, man. And he's a smart, he's very, his IQ for football is, is pretty high. So I think it's only just a matter of time before he just comes out. Right. And, and that's kind of that's kind of what was going on with Alex. Right. It was just like first time that he really got into a stable situation. And then you guys just took off like with Jim Harbaugh, like that. That team took off. It always felt like that team was very close. And sometimes people forget how important coaching is. So, you know, while you can judge the young man on based on how many games that he's played, it's still not enough, in my opinion. On the flip side of that, Vernon, Brock Purdy has a few more games played than him, but everybody seems to be all in like. Tell me the rationale that you believe, like why people are so stuck on. Well, not stuck, but they just believe much more in the, the the last pick in the draft than someone who's played just a few less games than him. I think it's all so when you in this game like this in, in big game, big. In a big business like this is a big business, right? That's that's all it is. It's a game, but it's also a business first. So when you have that, it's all about what what have you done for me? What can you do for me right now? Mm -hmm. What have you done for me lately? And this is the situation that's happening right now that we're seeing with Trey Lance, right? It's not that it's not because 
he's not talented or he can't bring anything to the team. It's just that he can't do it right now. So they're going with going with they're going to go with the next next guy, right? And that's the same way they did Alex Smith when Kaepernick. What, what can you do for me right now? Yeah, you right. heard. That's that's. I'm glad that you tied that all together because it kind of feels like it's it's a little bit different, like in those situations. But it is a very much results driven business, and it's like you've got to go with the guy that's like doing whatever right there. So I'm glad you tied that all together. Speaking of, you know, obviously 49ers, your place in 49ers tight end lore, right? Dwight Clark, you, there's another 85 that's right there. Vernon, talk to me about how how it feels to be regarded with, you know, such, you know, such big moments. Obviously, I, I want to ask you about, you know, the catch and everything after this. But, you know, like the, the whole idea of where your place is in 49ers tight end lore it seems like a pretty, a pretty, you know, like Mount Rushmore type uh, deal, right? Like, and and you're definitely on there. Talk to me about that. Yeah, I think the the, the playing with the my tenure with the San Francisco 49ers has been nothing but amazing. I, I think they gave me a wonderful platform to be able to showcase my talents and showcase myself as a person, my my character, my ability to play the game, everything. I gave my family. A better life, so I yeah you know, I would I don't regret any of it. I think it's 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 a beautiful. It comes out turns out to be a beautiful story, um, but yeah, the the playing the tight end position for the 49ers is 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 definitely a unique spot to be in. And like you said, all the guys who come in and they play the position, we can't create a rush a Mount Rushmore, uh, especially with George Kittle. They're now doing what he's doing. It's it's definitely unfolding into a Mount Rushmore uh, when it comes to the tight end position. But I'm I love what I'm seeing. I love the history behind the organization and just the opportunity they've given me. Absolutely. So I mean, I'd be remiss in my duties if I didn't talk about the catch against the New Orleans Saints. You know, I've been a fan for a long time. And I may not look, you know, like I'm super, you know, well, I'm not super old, but I may not look my age. Right. But I remember what it was like during the time when things were, you know, up and down. They weren't as fluid. And then Jim Harbaugh shows up and you guys go on this crazy run. And that New Orleans game is is so close to my heart. It's like one of the best moments ever. And it seemed like after that catch. Did that feel like a full circle moment for you, like during your 49ers tenure, because things had turned around so quickly and you guys had had like went from a team that was on the cusp. It felt like you had a roster, obviously was talented. And now you guys are winning playoff games, getting to NFC championship games. But then that that catch, it felt like was a moment where all the emotion was let loose right there because of everything that was built up. Did, Did you feel that in that moment? Was that what that was? Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think. That catch was just everything that was put into the journey. The hard work, dedication, the, the the ebb and flows of of the season, every season, and to be able to finally make it to a destination we've been praying for which is the playoffs and, of course, the championship, Super Bowl. We made it. And as a kid, you always want to hit that game-winning shot. To me, that was that game-winning shot. I came through, not for myself, but for my teammates, the coaches, the entire organization as a whole. And those were just tears tears of joy. That's awesome, man. I'll, like again, that's a moment that I'm gonna I'm gonna remember for the rest of my life. I remember exactly where I was. I know you're gonna remember it, but I know exactly where I was. I remember who I was watching that game with, and I just felt like I felt the same thing that you felt, kind of just like, oh wow, the, the 49ers are getting back to the the type of franchise that they've been known to do. Vernon, I know we uh we we got we're short on time. This will be my last question for you. I covered my first Super Bowl in Arizona, and I got a chance to catch up with Jay Glazer of Fox Sports, and I asked him a question about the league because it's one of my favorite shows and he was actually on the league and I asked him about his experience on it. And I said, Hey, like, do they give you a script? What goes on? And, and Jay was pretty candid in saying, well, they give you like a, an outline of what they want you to do, but it's somewhat improv, uh, you know, it's improvised. So you're in one of the episodes that I think is one of the funniest where taco is running a fake Vernon Davis account and you're there with, with him as well too. Was that your similar experience? Like, do they kind of just put you in like a room and they just say, Hey, go be funny and go do your own thing. Yeah, it's all improvised. I mean, they give you a script to go off of, but you can improvise. It's comedy, so 
you have the freedom and luxury to be able to play around with the dialogue a little bit. But that was, I remember that, I vividly remember being on that show and it was pretty cool running around, running around with Taco and those guys. It was, it, it was awesome. You know, that's one of those shows that I really enjoy being a part of. Yeah, that's one of the funniest parts is that, you know, uh, Andre asked him, well, I'll, I'll, he says, I'll ask the Vernon Davis I know. He goes, yeah, go ahead and ask the Vernon Davis you know. And then he pops up with you. And it's like, it's just so taco, like, to actually know you and just be like, well, is the Vernon Davis? Yeah, and he didn't even know you played football and stuff like that. Like, that's the best part about that. So, hey, uh, Vernon, thank you so much for your time. Um, promote uh, promote again one more time the website so everybody knows where they can log in and they can start getting going for you uh, and, and get this rolling. Yeah, absolutely. Um, smart picks, you should, it should be smartpicks.com. Okay. Smartpicks.com. Yeah, smartpicks.com smartpicks is where you'll be able to, to join this app of um, AI betting as well, too. I implore you guys to check it out. Vernon, thank you so much for your time, man. Really appreciate you. Hope you have a great day, man. You too. Thank you for having me. All right. All right.